Devin Geraci. Um, okay, so let's intro into morphometrics. So morphometrics is basically the field of multivariate statistical analysis concerned with the quantification of shape, description of shape that variability, the assessment of group differences in shape, and the co-variation of shape of other variables. That's a mouthful, and quite frankly, you could have read this slide. But here's my definition of morphometrics. <laughs> if I have one marker here, another marker here, we can say, yeah, this is bigger for sure, but is our, is our observation enough? Basically, morphometrics uses the multivariate statistical analysis to tell you that, hey, this is bigger statistically, so it proves it. All right, and morph morphometrics is all, has various applications. For instance, entomology. If I wanted to tell, there's, we have millions of bugs. If I wanted to tell you the statistical difference between different bug species in their own category, I could do that using shape analysis and morphometrics. One particular application that we were discussing in the lab is that, is that one certain bug species has a specific type of shape uh, in their mouth which makes them poisonous, but other species in that same bug species of that same uh, category has a, has a, has a similar um, structure but isn't poisonous. But using morphometrics, we can detect the really small statistical differences, giving us an indication as to which one is poisonous and which one isn't. If you look towards conservation biology, the same can be done when comparing species in that terms. And of course, in this particular case, we looked at these two categories combined together, forensic science and anthropology, which helps you in your classic murder investigations or simply just investigation into the different cultures and um, human structure. Speaking of human structure, that would be medical science. Okay, so we applied morphometrics by using a 3D laser scanner. And we use the scanner to scan different bones and objects so that we can study them and measure them on a computer with, like, um, with precise measurement. Um, the way a 3D laser scanner works is that it scans it uses either a laser line or a point to scan across the object, and a sensor will pick up the reflected light that comes off the object to determine the distance between the object and that scanner, and determine the shape. And basically, it forms like its own idea of what the shape is. The scanner that we use is the structured light scanner, and it's pretty small, about like the size of my hand, but. It, the way it works is that instead of projecting just a line, it projects a pattern across your object and uses the distortions that it picks up to form and reconstruct the object that you see. So that's what we use to determine our studies. So basically our project, the objective is basically to identify the remains of various animal species and document them using the 3D laser scanner that Sabrina just talked about. Um, why would we use the 3D laser scanner? It's simple. You want to model the shape and structure. And the, only, the best way to look at that is if you can look at it in 3D and fully get a whole visual look at it versus looking at a 2D plane. The final impact, though, of our project is to document all of this. We specifically looked at the bone structure of various organisms. Um, in particular, these. We actually brought them. So these various organisms, the reason we looked at them, the reason we scanned them, <coughs> is to start what we call the foundations of a database. Now the database can store various of uh, these models that it put, into 3D scan, uh, put into a 3D scan form. But why would we need them? Well, the applications can be for forensic anthropology, because when a forensic scientist is out in the field and they discover a bunch of bones, Who's to tell you which bone is definitely for sure human, and who's to tell you which bone comes from an animal? Having a database as a resource can be incredibly useful, and especially one that's digital and offers you a 3D look at it. On top of that, say you're in a museum and you want to print out a model. Now with 3D printing technology, we can actually upload these into the database and then print them out. Um, as a matter of fact, we actually have an example of what we did with that. The same otter skull that I was holding up here has been 3D printed. So from the database, that we're still constructing the database, but this is an example of what can be done on a bigger scale, say for a museum. As a matter of fact, um, I'll pass it around. You can start with it. Okay, so excavating <laughs> the dirt and cleaning. So when we first came into this project, Dr. Slice kind of handed us a bag. It was a trash bag about the size of this and said, this is roadkill from two years ago, go. 
So um, we kind of dumped out the contents and uh, we scrubbed through them. And if you look at this picture, you can see that they were initially pretty dirty as compared to that white state you're seeing over there. So they had pieces of flesh attached to them and dried tissue matter and dried blood matter. And it was our job to scrub through them. <laughs> So after all of that scrubbing and uh, discovering of bones, some bones we actually had to pull apart the flesh and find them in there. Um, we put them in a hydrogen peroxide solution to clean them up and then we had to sort each of the bones out. And then as you can see, we printed out this uh, uh, diagram of the skeletal structure of an otter and matched up the bones we had found with them. Um, and we had discovered that this was an otter using a dichotomous key for the skull. And it, though it took a long time, we were able to figure out it was an otter, print out the thing, and we laid out the bones. And as you can see, Sabrina over there actually managed to uh, put together the piece of the vertebrae into, what, uh, into the otter's um, uh, spinal structure. Um, so after we got all the bones clean and everything, it was time to scan them, which is what we did. So there were five steps. Basically, first you had to calibrate the scanner, which ensures that we all got like the most accurate representation we could. Um, next, we had either rotary or individual scans. And the rotary scan basically took a 360 degree um, scan of the object which that we were scanning first, which you can see was the skull. And then the individual scans are just a single still, which are then layered on top of each other in the alignment process. And you can see here, this is before we combined all of the scans together. And all the different colors that you see are different scans that we took of the skull. Um, after aligning, we combined them all into one file, and then we finalized it. So we went back and we filled in all the gaps that the scanner could not pick up, and we did all of that. And finally, like she said, mentioned before, we took the file. And because we could, we went and had the skull 3D <laughs> printed, which was pretty cool. I don't know where it is now, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, in essence, that was our project. It ties together a new field that's relatively new and emerging called morphometrics into different applications. In this case, a specific application was forensic anthropology. And um, it's actually pretty much shaping out to be a pretty big project because there's obviously various organisms, and we've only done a handful of the many that we can upload. So this could truly transform into a really big, wide-scale effort to create a database that's extensive for scientific research and educational um, impacts as well. Thank you. Thank you.